Hi, this is Robert Rapier, and this is R Squared Energy TV. On this week's episode, I've got a couple of questions that are not directly in my core area of expertise, but I know a little bit about them, so I'll uh, give it my best shot here to answer them. First question, can you do an episode on California's proposed greenhouse gas market and its implications? Also, can you cover resource shuffling? So, if you didn't know, California has passed a law to set up their own carbon trading market. Now, there's carbon trading markets around the world in places like Europe, in Japan, which basically allows someone who emits a lot of CO2, like a, a utility, a coal-fired coal power plant, uh, they, can, they can get these allowances and they can, if they reduce their emissions, they can sell them or they can actually use the, allow the allowances for their emissions. So over time, these allowances, uh, the, the, the number of them decreases and so the, the implication is, what they're, what they're attempting to do is force down the CO2 emissions over time. Any, uh, anybody that's a large emitter of CO2, as the allowances decrease, they'll pay more and more to emit that CO2. So that's how carbon market works. Uh, they, they do work around the world right now in different places. Um, you know, California's kind of always marched to the beat of their own drummer. It's going to be very interesting to see how this turns out for them. Uh, will their electricity costs go up? Will they drive industry out of state? I know that the, that the state is counting on this to be a revenue generator, and in the long run, it's, uh, it, you know, it's going to be kind of an interesting experiment to watch to see how this plays out for them. They do have serious budgetary problems. Uh, if it is you know, a positive for their budget, then uh, that'll be great. If it drives industry out of state, um, then it'll put them in a deeper hole. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, I, I think it's a really interesting experiment to watch play out. Um, we'll have to check back in in a few years to see how it worked. They, they, California is very proactive. I mean, they, uh, they've always had very strict standards on their, on their fuel, and as a result, their fuel costs have always been higher than, uh, than average for the U.S., but their per capita consumption of gasoline has always been lower, and, and some measurements quite low. So, um, you know, it's got a potential for them to really, you know, they're one of the, if, if just as an entity, they're one of the largest carbon emitters in the world. Uh, they've got a high population. So, uh, you know, it, uh, there's, there's a lot of incentive there for them and a lot of pressure on them to reduce those carbon emissions. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, resource shuffling. So my understanding of resource shuffling is that if a coal-fired power plant, for instance, imported renewable power, and then exported their coal-fired power, they might get the credits for the power that they imported, but then not pay a penalty for the coal power they exported. So they didn't really reduce their emissions at all, and yet they got, they got credit for doing so. So that's my understanding of resource shuffling. California is trying to make sure that that does not happen. So next question. <clears throat> I've read some reports claiming that thorium is much more dangerous than its proponents are willing to admit. Clearly it is abundant and uranium as a resource will run out. Can you do a podcast on the issue of thorium? So, um, you know, there's a lot of people that are really big proponents of thorium. And I, I, I read a lot of the uh, positives about, about it and it isn't clear to me really uh, just what the potential is. Uh, but mainly because it's not my area. It is still in a developmental stage. And anytime something's in a developmental stage, there are always potential issues that can crop up. So some of the advantages of thorium versus uranium is thorium is much more abundant. Uh, it creates less radioactive waste, and it's less likely to be prone to a runaway nuclear reaction. So a much lower chance of a meltdown. Um, but disadvantages mainly, though, it, it's, it's still under development. And it, it kind of reminds me of, uh, of advocates of hemp. I, I run into advocates of hemp all the time who will say, uh, you know, if not for the U.S. government interference, hemp would be producing, you know, all this biofuel for us. And to that I always say, hemp is not illegal to grow in a number of countries, and yet it has not uh, really uh, gained a foothold there, and it's, they're not producing biofuel out of that. So the, 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 the analogy here is, there may be a very good reason why thorium has not yet been commercialized. Um, it, it's, it definitely does have some advantages, but there may be some developmental issues that will take a lot longer to, uh, you know, to work out. 
I mean, the, there are some disadvantages. The fuel fabrication is quite costly, uh, and there are some technical problems. And as long as uranium is available, you know, people are not maybe going to spend a lot of money developing thorium. And I, 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 there, there are some projects under development right now. How serious uh, they are, how, how fast this grows, I think just really remains to be seen. But I do know proponents are very excited about thorium. I hear, I hear people talk about it all the time. Um, I, just, I, think it's, I, I just think it's quite early. So it's, it's really too early to tell you know, what thorium will ultimately uh, do as far as uh, providing nuclear power. So my best shot there, those really aren't my areas, but um, I figured somebody asked me the question, I'll give them my best shot. I'll, I'll probably have readers uh, write in and say, well, you, get, you didn't get this quite right or that quite right. And if so, I'll make a note in the, in the uh, text that accompanies this. With that, that's this week's episode. Look forward to seeing you next week.